Hello everyone, and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be talking about Star Wars Battlefront, Twilight Company. Uh, two uh, things below that. Hmm. Uh, two sub titles or whatever, or below titles or whatever. You know, uh, I remember uh, playing the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the first two Battlefront games and thinking that they were really fun, and um, I never really, uh, although I never got the the latest Battlefront game, you know, um, <clears throat> when I heard uh, there was some like negativity on that about, uh, I think how the whole th thing was like all you know, multiplayer online, and there wasn't any single-player stuff, and, um, yeah, I can see how that would be kind of, uh, damaging, especially since, um, <clears throat> sort of paraphrasing, like, something that Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation sort of talked about during his review of Star Wars Battlefront was how, essentially, you're not really following any specific character, you're just sort of, uh, playing some random dude for like maybe a minute or two a minute or two until they die and then you switch off some other nameless guy and um, you know it can be kind of hard to get really invested so you really got to make sure that your whole uh, you know so gameplay and all that other stuff is you know really solid you know <clears throat> You know, like Star Wars, the first one, but the first Battlefront didn't really need to do much aside from just give some fun multiplayer experiences. And the second one added uh, space battles, which I always sucked at and always lost at. <clears throat> and uh, I think I heard there's another uh, Battlefront game coming out, 17, 2017 or 18 or whatever. And um, I don't know, but. Anyway, um, for those of you that were disappointed that the latest uh, Battlefront whatever didn't have a single player or whatever, well, this, until the next one comes out, this is probably the closest you're going to get. Twilight Company centers around, of course, Twilight Company as they go throughout various uh, theaters of battle and campaign against the Empire. And, uh, yeah, and, um, <clears throat> and this we get to see the uh, new timeline. Let's take a look. Um, <clears throat> so far, the new timeline consists of Episode 1, Phantom Menace, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, The Clone Wars TV series, Dark Disciple, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Lords of the Sith, Tarkin, New Dawn, Rebels TV series, Episode 4, New Hope, Heir to the Jedi, Battlefront Twilight Company, this one. Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, then Ap Aftermath, and then Episode 7, Force Awakens. A little more uh, bare bones, the last uh, timeline before this has had like numerous, like I think a, several dozen or so different novels attached to it. <coughs> but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's nice. Uh, with, you know, considering the whole how much continuity was, I guess it's not. I guess it's kind of understandable. You know, kind of cleaning up the timeline a little bit. And uh, yeah, even if it is kind of disappointing for several fans, including myself. And um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> though this list is as before Empire Strikes Back, I would actually qualify this as sort of a side cool considering that one of the uh, battles that the Twilight Company is actually in is the Battle of Hoth and they actually go to toe to toe with and get their get their butts handed to them by Darth Vader <coughs> and um, well the, the, the different there are there's a bit of an ensemble cast you know the only characters that are really all that worth uh, that at least uh, caught my attention would be uh Namir, the sort of a, I guess, guy in charge now, soldier in Twilight Company, and uh, ex-governor Chalice, who's this uh, 
of course, former Imperial Governor who eventually sort of goes on to their side, but not really. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. And, um, kind of brings the whole, uh, flaws of the Twilight Company, I mean, flaws of Battlefront, you know, with the whole, like, there isn't really any, uh, singular hero, you know? Just, uh, <clears throat> bunch of nameless soldiers fighting and dying and it's kind of hard to really you know get invested in something like that and um yeah but overall this is actually a pretty good read you know i think even if you're you know like i always you know lately when I, I mean not lately but always whenever i look at a star wars book i always look at it in the concept of like like, uh, you know, like, always seem to give it, like, a 3 out of 5, like, if you're a Star Wars fan, although, now that I think about it, maybe I should really do that, because, like, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, would you like this if you weren't a Star Wars fan, you know? I mean, some stuff like, uh, Scoundrels, you know, which is basically just sort of Han Solo doing his thing and getting money, or there's, a uh, Darth Plagueis, which is pretty much entirely uh, based on, you know, just like the one little couple second scene from Darth, from the, from, uh, what is it, Revenge of the Sith, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, overall, I, I yeah, you know, I'd still save this as a th three out of five. If you're a fan of the Star Wars, and even the Star Wars Battlefront uh, series, I think you're going to like this, but um, I don't know. Uh, whatever you think in the comment section below. Um, anyway, um, next time I'm going to be taking a look at the continuation of a series that I've grown to love over the past several years. Yeah. Anyway, until the next time, keep yourselves awesome by going out, support your local bookstores, libraries with your patronage money, you know, whatever, and uh, donations or whatever, and have a good day.